everybody. Welcome to the uh, Circle Faction Focus. It's Brett and I again, Jeremy. <laughs> um, so, so we're just going to get right into it, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, so this, uh, some of the unique things about Circle is that we are very... Uh, we're all about getting the alpha strike and making sure we get the uh, drop on our opponent and uh, we kill them very well. Right. Yeah, I would say it used to be that our big thing was hit and run... Now I would say it's more of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't think, and I think another big thing about us is uh, I don't think anyone else utilizes terrain as much as we do. Yeah. And um, nobody else generates terrain like we do either. Or ignores terrain like we do. Right. <laughs> and even Legion doesn't ignore terrain quite as well as we do anymore because a lot yeah. of other things not only lost, or not only does Isle of Sight no longer ignore forests for Land of Sight, but a number of their beasts also lost Pathfinder. Mm -hmm. And we are the faction with the most Pathfinder, like, hands down. In fact, we only have one unit that doesn't, doesn't have Pathfinder. Pathfinder sometimes. Right. <laughs> they have Relentless Charge instead, which is Pathfinder when they charge, but they don't have Pathfinder any other time. Only when they charge. Yeah. And that's the closest that we have to things actually being slowed down by any kind of terrain. <laughs> Besides some of our war beasts. Right, yes, that's true. Um, so then, well, okay, given all that, what do you think is, like, the big strengths of Circle? What, what does Circle like, sell at? Long threat ranges and hitting hard. Is in my, or the two I find a lot. So like, why does Circle hit really hard then? Like, what makes them? Oh, uh, we we like... have uh we have okay like power of on our war beasts and things, but we have a lot of buffs that we can put uh on our things just to make them over the top and better. Uh, and so you start stacking those along with the occasional like debuff. Like we have a couple Curse of Shadows casters mm -hmm. and. It just get can get really dumb really fast. Right. Yeah. So uh, all warp wolves start out with like slightly below average to solidly below average power, but they all come with a built-in two strength bonus that mm -hmm. they can give themselves. Um, we have primal uh, in this faction on two different war beasts that you will find your way into most lists. So that's another two strength. Mm -hmm. And like you said, we have a lot of casters that have strength buffs and or armor debuffs. So effectively, we can always swing the strength of a war beast up by six mm -hmm. at the most if we want to, which is which is really good. Yeah, and like if you start like you pure, pure blood here starts at a fifteen on on one of his attacks, mm -hmm. and so you're going from a fifteen to a twenty one. This is a, such a big jump. Right, and the fun thing about a lot of those buffs is that they also tend to at least primal comes coupled with a uh, mat buff too. Yeah. So not only do we hit super hard, we hit really accurately. accurately. Yep. Um, which is kind of the thing about circle. I would say that we're probably one of the most accurate factions in melee. We're very precision oriented. Uh, faction where you uh, scalpel out the piece that you need to take out right. that threatens you the most. Yep. Um, I would say that another sort of strength of Circle, from my experience with it, uh, at least in Mark II, and looking at the cards <laughs> without a whole lot of personal experience in Mark III, uh, it still seems like this is true, is that our infantry doesn't require a lot of help. No, they require very little to none. We have very, very good infantry. Yeah. So they, they have kind of bad defensive stats, that's oh, our yeah. thing. But their offensive capability is always really high, and they mm -hmm. just don't need help from anybody to do it. And they can get into weird places because of all their Pathfinder, and mm -hmm. they can just do their job. They can, they can hide behind some terrain. Like, some of, like, the wolf sworn things can hide behind forests and see through them. Yeah, because we, uh, we still have things with Tracker, which mm -hmm. lets you ignore forests when you're charging, which is really fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, so I would say that's probably, like, like you said, offense is Circle's great strength. Mm -hmm. So what what is Circle bad at then? Defense. Yeah. <laughs> That's the flip side of that coin. <laughs> yeah, we are not good at taking a hit. We have some good. Uh, our defense stats are actually not that bad, but our armor stats aren't the best. Right. So like the Warp Wolves are all defense fourteen. Really high for a heavy. Which is very high for the heavy. It's actually it's like the it's highest. It's the highest. For, it's the highest heavy. for heavies. Yep. And a lot of heavies got hit in Mark Three for the defense, but the Warp Wolves stayed the same. But our other armor caps out at 17, 17. which yeah. is pretty, pretty low for a heavy. And that's on one of them, and most of the time it's 16. So And even even our tougher heavies tend to only be armor 18, with a couple of guys that are armor 19 base, and one... One! One heavy that's One 20, heavy is armor 20. And, and one colossal. Gargan 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 Sorry, Gargantuan, Gargantuan that's, armor that's armor 20, 20, 20. as well. So. Um, and yet, funnily enough, we do have... We have the Baldurs and Bradigus, yeah, who can build armor lists, but that's not typical of Circle. Not typical. It's a specialized thing. It's yeah, it's definitely a specialized see, thing, and those are more focused around the constructs. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, like we said, 
if Circle's really good at offense and bad at defense, when we do it the other way, we tend to also then be bad at, at offense. offense. So. Yeah, the, the constructs can be kind of pillow-fisted. Uh, that's another thing that's like a big strength of Circle, is we are pretty versatile in the options we have to take in lists. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of different kinds of lists that we can take. Um, because we have like the warp wolves, the satyrs, the goat, uh, the goats are the satyrs, the, the constructs. <laughs> uh, they, we have or a wide can, variety of lights too. Yeah, we have a lot of variety of, of lights too, with the griffins, the argi, the uh, the gorax, the gorax, uh, the other constructs, the other constructs. <laughs> yeah, it's, so it's you can take a wide variety of different kinds of lists. You can take an infantry heavy list. We have a couple casters that love the infantry, uh, and so it's it's very versatile. Um, I would say that uh, another kind of weakness of Circle is the ranged game. Oh yeah, we have like very little. Yeah. Um, yeah, like most things don't have a lot of guns, and even the things that do have guns tend to be short range. Short range, not high at the highest pow. Right. Um, Reeves, widely considered to be one of our best units in the game, is a, is a ranged unit, and is still pow 8 at the start. So <laughs> They get two shots. They get, but they get two shots, that's where they make up for it, so... Yeah. They're good at dealing with infantry, but... Yeah. Um, Alright, so let's get into the battle box then. Let's talk a little bit about what, and, what the circle battle box is. Uh, the circle battle box is ridiculous, is what it is. Um, Tanith is uh, a very, very strong battle box caster. She's a very, very strong caster, period. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to start with the front of the card. She's a... <laughs> is she a 14-14 or a 15-15? I think mean, she has this... Uh, same sort of stats line as, uh, as a lot of the new casters. Yeah, she, she's one of those, too. She's a 15-15, so she's a little on the squishier side, but she's she's still pretty hard to hit. Mm -hmm. um, she's pretty accurate, max 6, rat 6. Uh, she has a, an amazing gun. Oh my gosh, that gun. Oh uh, yeah, so when the gun directly hits, uh, it's a 4-inch AOE? Yes. And everything in it is shadowbound. So minus 3 defense, cannot move except to change facing, although you can shake it, and everything, like, and it still does damage. On and that too. it uh, it has this silly property uh, called from below, right? It's yeah, it, it's called from below. So you because it the thing is like her staff is made and like the lore behind it is her staff is made from the roots of this mystical tree named Wormwood. So she shoves it into the ground and the roots go out and come up beneath things. So because of that, the flavor wise, she ignores like elevation and concealment and cover yep. when she's making the ranged attack as well. So everything but stealth. So only stealth protects you from her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nothing mm -hmm. else keeps you safe from her. Yeah, and her melee attack has critical shadow bind. Right. So, so and she has two inch reach on that as well. Yeah. So she's a uh, she's got a solid attack of her own. Mm -hmm. uh, and her real strength though lies in her spells. Yeah. She uh, another thing that helps with her defense though she does have prowl, so you can hide her very well. Uh, her spells are amazing. She has admonition, which is a spell we should have never been allowed to have. Um, okay. Never thought I would ever see the day where Circle got admonition yet. We have it in a battle box of all things. Uh, it's so good for, especially since we have some of the higher threat ranges in the game, or potential threat ranges in the game, to where if something does out threat us, it's harder, even harder for them to get to us now. Right. So basically, ammunition goes on model and uh, in the battle group, and if another, if an enemy model ends its movement within six inches of it, uh, the the model with ammunition gets to move three inches and ignore free strikes. And that's basically just far enough away to take it out of the melee range of almost every model in the game. Yeah. Only models with a 4-inch reach can still get them. And there's only a couple and of those. And there's only a couple of those. Uh, her next spell is Afflection, which is amazing. So it's like minus 2 defense. I'd, for, I'd play 2 Fury for an upkeep that just like, does minus 2 defense alone. But this also makes it so if you fail to exceed armor, you still do a point. So it's good to help clear the infantry out. Mm -hmm. um, and it pairs really well with the... Uh, you know, we mentioned earlier the Reeves. Because it's, yeah, it's great for having low-powered uh, things attack high-armor things, because uh, you just keep failing to break its armor, and you just do one damage every time. And if you have enough attacks, you can still... Yeah, so if you have a lot of low-power attacks, you can take down really big things still because of Affliction. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of our offensive spells are Bleed, uh, which is really relevant because of her feet. Mm -hmm. Um which we'll get to later. It's like a low pile spell that uh, if she kills something with it, she gets to... Or no, she damages it. Yeah, she just have to damage. She, if she damages something with it, she gets she gets to heal. D3. D3. Which is... uh, she has Rift, which is a common offensive spell in our faction. Uh, range 8, AoE 4, POW 13, leaves rough terrain. I think she's the third caster with it now. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's like our signature spell. 
we deal with rough terrain, so we make it so that we throw out more, so our opponents have trouble dealing exactly. with it. Exactly. And then we have uh, Scything Touch, which is also really dumb. It gives a uh, it's an upkeep that gives them all Dark Shroud, which is really good. It's another uh, it's a debuff. buff slash debuff because you're giving it to your own model, so we consider it a buff, I guess. But it's mainly a debuff to their model for the armor that increases our hitting power by a lot. Yeah, so basically as long as uh, as long as an enemy model is within the melee range of the model you put that spell on, it loses two armor. Mm -hmm. So like because it, it's like you can have other things going afterwards and still get the benefit from the thing having minus two armor. Yeah. So basically really her spell list is essentially designed around the idea that um, if your opponents have high defense, she lowers that. If they have high armor, she lowers that. Uh, so basically it's just She's just great at making sure that any problem solver. Yeah, anything that you bring with her can kill anything your opponent brings. Mm -hmm. and it's very frustrating. And then with her feet, it is really good. It's not. It's not. I'm not gonna go so far as say it's, it's great. It's an okay. Feet, it's an okay yeah. feet, <laughs> but it's it's really fun. It's and it pairs well with her own spell list. Yeah, it pairs thing. well with her own spell list. But it's uh, while on, like you pop your feet and you can now channel spells through the war beasts in your battle group. And then when you do channel a spell through a war beast in your battle group, you reduce the cost by one. Um, and then when your war beasts use their animi, they also reduce the cost by one. Yes. To a minimum of one. Yeah, minimum of one. Uh, the other thing about it is really fun that you can do is you can just upkeep all of your spells and then arc your upkeeps and change where they are. Uh, and so that's really one thing I've done with it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. I've assassinated Casper with it before because I took like a Wold Wrath with her which gives her auto boosted to hit. Yes. Yeah. His Animus uh, gives you an extra die on your magic attack rolls against things that are within 10 of him. 10 mm -hmm. inches of him. Uh, so that pairs super well with her feet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah it's basically her feet just like enables her and her war beasts to use their their own spells to the maximum effectiveness possible. Mm -hmm. So uh, what else is in the battle box then? Uh, we have a pure blood warp wolf, which has uh, a ten inch spray with assault, which is very good. Mm -hmm. um, he has uh, even more answers because he has wraith bane. Right. So he has animus that allows you to ignore spells that add to the defense and armor of your opponent. So after dropping their defense and armor, you can then ignore any buffs that they put on themselves. And that animus is still a range six, so you can put it on other things mm -hmm. too, which is very good. Uh, he also is very good himself because. He is still a defense 14, armor 16. 17. 17. Oh, he's still 17. Okay. Um, 17. Um, he has, uh, like all the warp wolves, he, he can choose to, to warp for different things. His warps are particularly useful because uh, he can I, he can make himself immune to enemy spells, or he can give himself ghostly. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't naturally have Pathfinder, so ghostly lets him ignore rough terrain or walls. Um, but it also is really nice because he has a gun that he likes to shoot a lot, and if he gets engaged in melee, he, he can just warp for ghostly and he walk can away. Use ghostly to walk out of melee without suffering a free strike. Mm -hmm. And then you know, obviously all the warples have plus two strengths as, as the third one. Right. Another thing he has that's really good that all the warples have is the regeneration for D three. Right. So if he doesn't die, uh, you can have him spend a fury on himself. That's to... the key. Is if he, if he doesn't die, it makes them slightly more resilient against yes. shooting. Because uh, sometimes people will shoot you and you'll lose an aspect, but he can then force himself to regenerate and get some of that back. Um, yeah, he's the he's one of the very few where I don't have to like always question just like which work should I actually do? Oh, it doesn't really matter. I, if like spell ward or sacred which one is spell, it? Ward. spell ward like will all usually always it's always matter. helpful. Yep, it's always good or ghostly. Uh, so yeah, he's always got something he can do. He's he's just kind of a nice solid all arounder. Mm -hmm. And then over here we have the wild Argus that's really good in the battle box. Uh, one of Circle's new favorite toys. I know, right? The uh, the star of the Wild Argus is Animus, which is Doppler Bark. So for two Fury, it's ranged self. Anything within two inches of it, it, any living, living or, or undead, undead model within two inches of him is reduced to defense five, and it, that's just amazing. So like you charge him in to their caster, who's a defense seventeen. You spend two Fury, and you're gonna hit. Yeah, it's um. So where where Tanith, you know, she can lower the defensive things, and the the pure blood he can ignore any defensive buffs they have. Uh, the Argus just removes defense as an issue altogether. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and basically, once he's done that, you can hit with anything, even ranged attacks. Yeah. Even if they're getting them in melee bonus because they only go up to a nine at yeah, that point. It, it doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't. Yeah. And then um, 
and he himself can still kind of hit hard because yeah, he has his combo strike. Yeah, so he can sacrifice his two initials to make one initial that's more powerful, which is very handy. And mm -hmm. um, I think they're 14, 15 now. Yeah, they swapped the, the defense armor and armor defense. from Mark uh, two. They're now down to speed six. Yeah, so uh, he's not as annoying to remove as he used to be, but he still has a decent number of boxes. I think like 22, so mm -hmm. uh, he's not trivial to get rid of either. No. Um, and then who's on the last line? It's the Gorax, Gorax right? Is it? I don't have it up here. All right. um, but he's really good because he provides you with one of the most common and best buffs in our faction is Primal. Uh, it's his Animus. It's cost two, range six, and it gives you plus two mat and strength. But you're on, on a friendly faction with War Beast, but it, you automatically frenzy during the next turn. Yeah. Um, and so that's really good because it makes it you re it makes your War Beast very reliable at taking out the targets that they need to even at the uh, cost of having to Frenzy next turn. Because a lot of the times, even if you do Frenzy next turn, it's still in their faith, it's still in their way. A lot of the times, they do still need to take care of it. Uh, and the thing is, too, about it is that um, it's very emblematic of this circle because uh, our Warp Wolves, as we talked about earlier, they don't live through much. No. So you don't need to really worry about your not having control of your Warp Wolf on the following turn. Because it's probably going to be dead. Be dead anyway. So, yeah, usually, uh, usually circle players will use that spell whenever they really need to remove an extremely important target, and they don't care if they give up their warp wolf to do it, mm -hmm. because uh, in ninety nine percent of cases, that's what you've you've done. You've just given it away, and your opponent will kill it at some point. Yeah. Um, so, and uh, other than that, he's not too remarkable himself. He has a couple of attacks. Yeah. Um, he's not as good as he used to be, unfortunately. Yeah, he still has pain response, at least. He still has pain response. So if he, he makes a great transfer target, because he has a, a fair number of boxes. Uh, he's not going to... He's kind of slow, uh, and his, uh, his inherent mat is sort of low, so he's not going to necessarily be getting into me melee right away by himself. Um, so you can transfer damage to him very easily. And then if, you, if he has suffered any damage at all... Uh, he gets to run and charge for free, which helps ease the fury burden for your mm -hmm. caster, and makes him a little more effective himself. Uh, plus, if you throw, I mean, if you throw the right buffs on him, he can still kill things. Uh, yeah, like if Tan puts dark or er, uh, uh, siding touch. siding touch on him, and then puts primal on him, like he's all of a sudden uh, Matt seven. hitting at max seven, hitting at PS sixteen, and like if he's taking damage, which he probably has, he charges for free. Like, that's nothing to laugh at at all. Yeah, so he can definitely beat another light to death or rip the arms off of a heavy. heavy. Yeah, yeah, he can do some good damage to a heavy still. So. Um, so, expanding from the battle box, what yeah. should we start? What do you think? Well, let's see. Uh, we had... Let's see. Um, what, uh, okay, what solos do you think are super important, then? Um, I mean, we have one right here. Yeah, one of them that's really good with pretty much any caster is the uh, Druid Wilder because she uh, helps a little bit with your Fury management uh, because she can take, she has a star action where she can take away one Fury from each living war beast within three inches of her. That's very powerful. It's really, really good. In it, because in Mark Three they reduced uh, the Fury management capacity um, of at least two factions. But uh, the Legion and Scorn, but they actually improved Circle Stream management capacity by imp like giving her that ability, and then you know we kept it on our Shifting Stones and things like that. Mm -hmm. So and the other thing is uh, the with Primal is another kind of way you can manage your Fury because you don't have to worry about the Fury that's on that War Beast next turn since it's going to frenzy and go away anyway. Yeah, that's true. It is gonna. Yeah, it's absolutely gonna frenzy. So there's no point in uh, trying to take any off of it to keep it from frenzying because nothing you do will stop it. Although you still can if you need it. Yeah. Uh, she also provides a free upkeep for casters that she's with, which is very big. Which is the big reason. Big reason why. Right now. Yeah, yeah, that's and then like she still has the herding ability, so you can. Uh, she expand pretty much expands your control area for forcing and uh, leeching from beasts mm -hmm. uh, from uh, her command range. Mm -hmm. Which is seven inches, right? Yes. So yeah, she gives you basically like an extra seven inch bubble that you can uh, really get your beasts way out there, which is sometimes really valuable with uh, a couple of the lower fury warlocks. I like Tanith, she doesn't really want to be on the front lines that often. Yeah. Uh, yes, we definitely, have, uh, we definitely have a few casters that don't have the best defensive stat lines, but also uh, don't have the largest fury stats, so... Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I would say she's probably a really good choice. The other solos I would recommend would be Gallows Groves. They come in packs of two. Uh, they're two-point models. They're amazing because they're arc notes, and they're cheap, they're mobile, and they can also, uh... Remove 
uh, remove tough and prevent healing. Healing within five inches. Within five inches. Uh, used to be three. Now used it's to be five. three, but they used to be able to get placed further. That's true. Uh, so they don't move. They, that's the, another reason why I like them a lot is because uh, you don't have to worry about free strikes with them ever. Uh, because you can't run and engage them because they get placed instead of moving. Mm-hmm. They get placed completely within five inches, and so you can just maneuver like that. You don't have to worry about them taking free strikes, and so you pretty much can always rely on arcing with them if they're not dead. Uh, their down, big downside for them is that they, being trees, they uh, are automatically hit in melee and only defense 5 against range, so mm-hmm. they're very easy to get rid of. They are armor, armor 16 and with 5 boxes, though, so I have seen people struggle to shoot them off the table. With low power guns, that's definitely Well, even true. PAL-12s, you're at minus, you're at minus 4. You're not going to kill in one shot. That's true, yeah. They definitely, uh, if you're going to shoot them with anything that's not boosted, you definitely need more than one shot almost all mm-hmm. the time. Um, if you get into melee with them, they pretty much always die to yeah. everything. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very true. But uh, they do also have Prowl, so you can kind of mitigate a little bit of the shooting that they're going to take. Um, and an important thing to note, actually, about this, this whole Prowl thing is um, that's the rule where if you're in the concealment, you gain stealth. Mm-hmm. So um, in Mark III, um, the camouflage mechanic went away, um, but Circle has gained a lot of Prowl on like a lot of different models that they have. And, uh, in fact, with the, the models that Circle has that have Prowl and the, mod- the minion models that it can take that have Prowl, uh, Circle has access to more Prowl than any two other factions put together. Oh, yeah. Which, and Circle also has a, uh, access to a lot of models that inherently have stealth. So uh, Circle actually has kind of a naturally strong resistance to being shot mm-hmm. simply by virtue of the fact that they can utilize terrain or just naturally be immune to, to uh, or naturally be stealth. And it's really hard for a lot of armies or a lot of factions to deal with that on the scale that Circle has. Um, so I, I just thought I would throw that in there because yeah. they have because they have that rule. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Wayfarer. Yeah, the Black Cloud Wayfarer is another. I don't have him up here, but he's a very very good solo. Uh, he has did he he gained Prowl didn't he? He has Prowl himself. Yeah, he has Prowl as well, so he can, he's pretty good to protect. He's a fourteen thirteen speed six. He's a magic caster. Uh, but he has the big part about him of why you take him is uh, Hunter's Mark. That's what the name of it was. Right. Uh, but he's a magic ability 7, too, so like it, it, you, uh, pretty reliable to hit, too. But Hunter's Mark, if you hit a model with it, anything that charges it gets plus 2 inches to, uh, uh, distance on the charge. And can, uh, the Aurora Beasts get to charge it for free, which is huge. Right. Uh, so this is another, just another threat extender, and you get, like, not having to spend that fury for a charge lets you get that extra attack in there, too. Which is really which good is for very good. helping our beasts kill things. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he also has, if you take Shifting Stones, he can be placed according to them. If he is within two inches of a Shifting Stone, he can teleport completely within 12 inches of his current location. Or from anywhere on the board, he can teleport, use the same spell to teleport back to with completely within two inches of a Shifting Stone. Which has more applications than you would think. Yes, it does. Um, especially considering the fact that uh, in Mark III, he's also a Battle Wizard. Mm-hmm. And he has a mat 7 and a power 10 weapon with 2 inch reach, so he can actually kill things fairly well. Like, mm-hmm. you can pick out a low armor target and hit it fairly accurately and kill it. And, and then, then teleport away. Teleport away, which is very nice. Uh, and then his last spell is um, Stone Spray. Stone Spray, which is an 8 inch spray that's power 12, and on a critical hit, he knocks down uh, the model that he hit. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, so the funny thing that, that I always like to think about the. the, the Wayfair is you bring him for uh, you bring him for Hunter's Mark, but half the time and he ends up stone using spray. Spray, stone spray because it's just so good. It's so good. Uh, and I've it, never actually I don't think I've ever knocked anything down with stone spray. I pro- I think that I forget about that. Maybe <laughs> I've uh, I feel like I have to have forgotten about. It. I feel, I don't feel like I could never have not knocked down something with stone I've, spray. I've done it a few times. It's always but, fun. But I it's it's a path twelve spray. Yeah, with, and you. Naturally, seven. Like, yep. it's so good. It is, it is extremely good. And um, if you combine that with his battle wizard ability, uh, things get a little silly sometimes because mm-hmm. he can, like, charge in, kill a guy, and then line himself up for a really good spray on the rest of a unit and mm-hmm. just take out a bunch of dudes. Um, and uh, with his prowl, he's also kind of hard to kill in response. You know, you have to usually mm-hmm. get at him in melee or have some ability to ignore his stealth. Yeah. And another thing that's really cool about him is he's immune to the elemental uh, oh, yeah. types He's of damage. All all types. And I believe <coughs> also corrosion. Yeah, I think he got the uh, gained the immunity to corrosion. So basically, any if your opponent attacks you with any kind of typed attack, he's immune to that, naturally. Mm-hmm. Uh, also makes him a great target for 
um, landing your own elemental attacks exactly where you need them to be. Yes. Because you can just target them on him, and uh, they will do no damage to him, but the effect will land where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, he's a great solo. Um, definitely one you should all, like, you should pick up right away. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he was one of my first purchases, and I've never looked back. I know. <laughs> he's so good. He's very handy. Uh, and then for units, a couple of the ones that we've already, let's go over these ones because we've already talked about on the Reeves. Uh, we talked a little bit about them. They do have what we call, like to call victim stats. Yep. Uh, so they are defense 13, armor 13. So they are... They're Hit not... by most everything, killed by most everything. Exactly. But they are <laughs> range 12, POW 8 or 9? POW 8. 8. Uh, but they always get two shots, and they have CRA. So this basically mm -hmm. means that uh, every guy can shoot and combine each of his shots with one of his buddies, and you can effectively get... Uh, like 10 shots out of the unit that are um, mat, uh, rat 7 because mm -hmm. they're base rat 5 and you get plus 2 for the combine and then they're pal 10. So um, like pal 10 is about the same power that most other CRA units have uh, but most other CRA units start at rat 5 pal 10 and ours are like when they make their pal 10 shots they uh, you know they're rat 7 so effectively we just get to make like a lot of really accurate shots. Mm -hmm. Um, and if, uh, like, if another CRA unit were to combine up like that and make, like, Rat 7, Pal 12 shots, they'd only be getting 5 as opposed to our 10. Did, did they keep the, where they can ignore, uh, Forest? Yes, they still have Hunter, uh, which doesn't allow them to ignore Forest for line of sight anymore, but it, it allows them to ignore Concealment, concealment and cover. cover, which are very common defenses against, uh, against shooting, and so these guys can be really accurate and they also have the extra pseudo accuracy of just being able to ignore the standard defenses to being shot. Mm -hmm. And their a unit attachment lets them see our end melee, I believe. Yes. So he grants them the war tempered ability, mm -hmm. which uh, lets them make combined range attacks at targets that are in melee, which normally you're not allowed to do. Um, so you can you can make really accurate attacks against models that are in melee, effectively negating their in melee their in melee defense bonus. And then what else does he give them? I think he gives them one more thing. Uh, yeah, me too. Here he is. He also gives them go to ground yes. as a mini feat. So Brett mentioned that they have def like really bad victim stats. <laughs> but go to ground lets them, uh, they gain cover wherever they're standing for one turn. Uh, and immunity to blast damage. And immunity to blast damage. Which is also very good. So armor 13 it does, is not enough to keep them alive against most blast damage. But being immune to blast damage for a turn really helps that. And... Going from defense 13 to defense 17 against shooting also really helps them uh, not get shot off the table mm -hmm. one turn. It gives them like that one turn of setup that they need yeah. before they can start shooting. Um, then another thing that's really cool about them, because you do have so many shots, you can put two, and with CRA you can just put two uh, really high power shots into like a heavy. Wherever it is. Even if it's in melee, you can still do that. Yep, exactly. And like at that point, you're going to be such a high rat that you're not going to care. Right. Yeah, so uh, it's also great for shooting casters and things like that. Mm -hmm. So if uh, if you get a bead on their warcaster and you have a bunch of them still left alive, you're gonna put a really high, you're gonna put two really high power, really high accuracy shots into their caster, which could be enough to tip the scales in your favor. Mm -hmm. um, honorable mention for them is Tanith, because I don't think any other caster synergizes as no, well. No, they they don't. There's a, hands down Tanith is the best with Reeves. A Reeves are the best with Tanith, I should say. Because of her spell affliction. Because instead of having to put those two really high power attacks into a heavy to damage it, you just throw affliction on it, and all of a sudden they automatically just took at least 22 damage. Exactly. Because uh, she can, yeah, affliction drops their defense, and then you don't care that you're only power 8 against whatever their armor is, because you still do one damage all the time anyway. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you take 22 shots, and uh, that, that'll that cripple a heavy so badly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean... Screw it at that point, take like Tanith and two units of reason, just kill a heavy a turn. Well, the great thing is if you <laughs> shoot a heavy for 22 damage, uh, anything can kill it. Yeah. At that point, anything, anything can kill it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty good. Although, like, the one, they do, they cannot do anything in melee. Uh, yeah, it is true. They are quite bad at melee. So if, if they get if they get tied up, it, it's gonna be if you, it's gonna be really difficult for them to get themselves out of melee. But still, overall, though, a great unit. Um, oh, yeah. If they're one of Circle's best shooting options, so they're a good thing to move into if you feel like actually having a shooting option. Um, so let's see, what else for units? Um, the other thing I have up here are the Warborn Skinwalkers. They're one of our heavy infantry uh, options. They're 
uh, they're one of our slower options, but they're extremely durable and hard to take out and really annoying to get rid of. Uh, one of the few heavy infantry options in the game that has eight boxes instead of five. Yes, uh, these are the one models we were talking about that had Relentless Charge instead of Pathfinder. So they don't always have Pathfinder, but they're speed five with reach. They're defense 12, armor 16 with an unyielding. So as long as they're engaging another model, they go up to armor 18, uh, which is... Uh, a lot of other infantry will struggle to deal with mm -hmm. armor 18 infantry with eight boxes. And we have a few ways to improve their armor. Yeah, we have a couple casters that can increase that even more by two, uh, which gets even more ridiculous. Um, the other thing that makes them really hard to deal with is like if they get shot on the way up or if you try to plink them away, they have hyper-regeneration, so immediately when they activate, they're going to heal D3 damage. Right. So generally, unless they're dead, mm -hmm. they, uh, they have the, always have the possibility of like getting back to full strength. Yeah, like so. A lot of the times when I, when my experience in playing them, they ha instead of having eight boxes, it's more like them having like ten to eleven. Right. Uh, because of that, they also uh, have s uh, gang with each other. So they start off at pal twelve and mat six, and they go up to actually. Well, let me check that. It might be mat five now because of that. No, I think it actually is mat six. Yeah, I, I thought I was pretty sure, but yeah, yeah, they are mat six, so. The, and all of this is, uh, the, the UA is actually what gives them, um, the gang, the, the gang. uh, but he is definitely worth taking, uh, and the great thing is it's a tactics, so it's tactics, so they always keep it, right, so by taking him, you just give them gang forever, even if he dies, mm -hmm. so we'll go up to Matt 8, PS 14, which can do a lot of damage on charge attacks, uh, that's high enough, uh, accuracy and damage to kill every infantry unit. Oh, yeah. Um, not, a, they're not necessarily a lot of attacks, but every attack that hits will kill a model. Mm -hmm. And at PAL 14, if they charge a heavy, they'll still do some solid damage. And I could, you can almost guarantee you're going to have at least like one, two to, at least like two left the next turn if you're going up just, uh, against just another infantry unit. Yeah. Um, they, are they are very difficult to remove. Mm -hmm. The UA also gives them a very useful uh, mini feat as well uh, of... Uh, I, I forget what it's called. Uh, I think it's called Night House. Yeah, it is called Night House. But while within three inches of one of the models in the unit, you cannot give or receive orders or cast spells. So you can run to engage a unit and like make sure that they can't charge anywhere. Or you can run... Uh, you, it also stops beasts from being able to cast their animi, which can hurt. I've caught casters in it, so they had to go out of their way to move away from them to be able to cast spells for their army. They just They will get in the way. Yeah. They're, that's and that's kind of their whole point is they just get in the way and are annoying. Um, so let's see, one of our other versatile units is uh, blood trackers. Okay, yeah. So blood trackers are kind of a good, uh, another really good unit in Circle. They're they've been a staple for a long time, and I don't really see that changing. Me either. Um, so they basically they they they're one of our stealth options. They're they're pretty quick. They have speed seven. They have high defense but low armor. They're advanced deploy. And they're advanced deploy and. Um, their big thing is that they have uh, they have thrown spears that are short range, but they're weapon masters with those spears. So those spears always do three dice for damage, um, and then they have uh, prey. Uh, with, so they every turn or at the beginning of the game they pick a target, which is either one model or a unit of models, and uh, whenever they make an attack roll against that model, they get plus two to hit and plus two for damage. So basically, they pick out the thing they really want to kill and they go kill that thing. And uh, once they've killed it all, they can move their prey to somewhere else. Um, basically, all these abilities kind of combine to just make them, like, they're very fast, and they can get where they want to go quickly, and they can do a lot of damage, uh, especially if you're doing it to your prey target, and, um, they have, uh... Well, with New Allah, they get quick work. Quick work, that's what it is. So, yeah, with their unit attachment, they can, uh, they can charge into melee and stab things with their, uh, with their melee attack, and then throw spears after that. So, so they can end up clearing a horde of infantry out just by themselves. Right. So they're yeah they're really good at either uh, at either like ganging up to bring down bigger targets or spreading out and uh, just wiping out lots of smaller targets. And the uh, quick work with Nuala is also a, uh, a tactic, so they always keep that too as long as you take her. Uh, she used to give the re reposition three. three in Mark Two, but now she gives Swift Hunter. Uh, so as long as you kill something with a range attack, then you get to move two inches. Yeah, which is. Uh, Generally, more than enough for them to get into better spots. Um, some other things that we don't necessarily need to go into super detail about, but are just kind of important to mention. Uh, there's like a whole set of models that are that are Tharn models. Um, there's in addition to the blood trackers, there's a, there's like other female Tharn uh, units and solos that um, 
kind of function on a similar in a similar vein. They're fast. They have high defense. They have specialized attacks. Um, our, our one of our cavalry units is a is mounted Thard women with who also have uh, javelins that they throw. Um, the other one are like witches who have different attack types they can choose based on the situation. Um, and then there's a solo for them that'll help them like turn up their killing ability. Solo, so good. Um, the male Tharn, uh, they tend to be big and like burly. They're still fairly quick for medium-based infantry. Uh, and they have they only have five wounds, but they all have tough. Mm -hmm. um, and they have high defense for medium-based infantry, but low armor. But their killing power is extremely high, and they can they kill, will also kill hordes of infantry. They can kill themselves. hordes of infantry, or they can gang up on bigger targets again mm -hmm. and bring them down. Uh, which is kind of a standard thing about circle infantry is its versatility in how it can be applied. Um, and then aside from all of the Tharn uh, and their inter and, and their uh, things, we also have a whole set of guys called Wolf Sworn. Um, the Reeves are Wolf Sworn, and the the uh, Skinwalkers are Wolf Sworn. But there's also like Wolves of Orboros, which are a melee unit. Uh, they're your typical. Uh, they're they're unit. they're a cheap unit. Yeah, they're very cheap. Uh, they die to pre to protect the rest of your army. But if they are ignored, they die to a stiff breeze. Right. But if they are ignored, they again can also cause a lot of a lot of pain. Um, and a lot of the Wolf Swarm models like interact with each other in really cool ways and provide buffs to each other just for being near one another. Um, and then on top of that, we have some utility units too. Oh, like the Shifting Stones. Shifting Stones, Sentry Stones. Uh, we have. Uh, they're kind of offensive, but also utility, like Druids of Orbros, uh, Druid Mist Riders. They're they're very good. Yeah. So kind of the more Druid side of the... Of, They're more spellcasty kind yeah, of thing. They tend to be more like spells and like you said, the uh, utility units that do things that necessarily that don't necessarily kill stuff all the time, but they kind of turn your army on. Like for instance, Shifting Stones can place models uh, with completely within eight inches of wherever they're currently at. It allows you to like ignore obstacles that would normally be in your way. Or your other models. Or too. other models. But those stones also like heal model can also heal models that are near them and, and things like that. Um, the Sentry Stones uh, produce little mannequins that do fighting for them, but they, and then they also create forests uh, and things like that. So then we move on to like War Beasts and stuff like uh, War Beasts. So yeah, the I would definitely recommend the other two uh, varieties of War Beasts that come in the kit. They are both very good. The Feral and the Stalker are both good in their own unique ways. The Feral also has the Animus uh, Primal, so he's really good. Uh, so you can possibly switch out your Gorax for him to have another heavy hitter, but still keep the primal buff. Right. And the Feral is probably our best standard um, beater guy. Yeah. Like, he's sort of an elite uh, melee fighting machine. Yeah, he's a, a high mat for his point cost. Yeah, he's a high mat and a solid strength, power and strength, that mm -hmm. only gets better when you start applying all the various buffs that we've talked about. Uh, and he can choose to be either... Uh, his, his warps are, he either gets two extra armor, which brings him up to armor 18, which makes him a little more difficult to kill at ranged, um, but definitely not tough enough to live in melee. Um, but he has the two strength, which helps him kill anything, or he has two speed, which helps him get everywhere he wants to go. Very yeah, quickly. going up to, he puts him up to all the way up to a speed 8, which is ridiculous. Yeah, heavies uh, shouldn't be speed 8, generally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he still has a plus two strength. Yeah, so um, he's really good, like... Like I said, he's kind of our, your elite warp wolf. Mm -hmm. And then the stalker is kind of a specialized warp wolf, mm -hmm. uh, where he uh, he has Pathfinder. He's the one of the war only warp wolf that does, uh, and he has a Reach sword. Uh, his uh, he only has two attacks. The other ones have three. Oh, wait, no, he doesn't have three. He only has two. Yeah, he has because his his third one is his spray. His howl. But he only has a, his sword and his open fist because he wears a muzzle because he's crazy. Um, but his, uh, animus is, uh, lightning strike, so it costs one, and it's a ranged self. If he kills a model during his activation, then he can make a full advance at the end of his activation, which is very good. So he's our, he's like your hit and run heavy. Mm hmm And then his three warps are, uh, you have prowl, so if you have concealment, you have stealth. You have berserk, so he can kill loads of infantry. So if you kill a model, you get a free, you have to make another swing. Whether it's ha and it has to be on, so if you kill all the enemy models and you kill the model and you have a, one of your models in his melee range, he still has to swing on it. So it can be a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. And then he still has his uh, warping for strength. Yeah. But the Pathfinder and Reach can be very helpful on yes. him. Yes. And uh, the Berserk kind of cements him as the uh, the premier infantry killing 
uh, War Beast in the faction, really, because of the fact that he can just, uh, if he gets into range of enough guys, he can basically kill all of them and then run away. Mm -hmm. uh, which means that if you feed a unit to him piecemeal, you'll never actually get him, but you'll constantly lose models to him. Exactly. Uh, we also have the other classification of heavy war beasts we have are the satyrs. Uh, they're really good. They're very cheap. So uh, satyrs all, yeah, they all basically perform a specialized task, and they don't cost much uh, to do that. So we have the, this satyr here is the gnarl horn. He slams stuff real good. He's, yeah, he slams things real good. Um, that's what he's all about, and he's very cheap. Um, we also have another satyr uh, called the Riphorn, whose job is just to beat things. Um, so he's not a premier like melee killer like the Feral Warwolf is, but he still has a lot of attacks that he can make, and he charges for free just all the time. So he can still trade uh, for another, another heavy war beast very effectively, especially if you give him buffs so that he's strong enough to kill it on his own. And then the last one we have is the Shadowhorn Satyr, and his specialization is throwing, uh, and he's very quick. So he he's uh, he has jump, like bounding leap ability, so after he walks, he can spend a fury and then jump somewhere else, uh, which lets him get into crazy places, and then he can uh, punch things, and he has a, like a chain attack throw. Mm -hmm. So if he hits with both of his fists, he can then grab the model that he was attacking and throw it somewhere, which uh, lets you cause all kinds of mayhem. All kinds rise. of messes. Yeah. Uh, and then our last major classification are the wolves. Um, so they're the big construct war beasts. They have the higher armor but the lower offensive power. Um, they and have more boxes. They have a ton of hit boxes, which actually makes them a lot more durable than most people would assume. Um, <clears throat> one of their cool things, this is this one right here is called the the Wold Warden, and he'll crop up in lists sometimes, or the character version of him, whose name is Megalith, will crop up. Um, because they have the ability to cast a spell that you're, that is on your Warlock's card. Um, they use their own magic ability that they have for it, um, but basically they, it just gives you extra ways to cast spells that your Warlock knows without them having to cast it, um, which can be great for getting out those offensive spells that you rarely use. Um, and then the other one that we have is, uh, the other big heavy one that we've got is uh, the Old Warlock Guardian. Guardian, and he's basically just like the toughest thing in the faction. The toughest, beefiest thing, like, ever. Yeah, he has he's, armor 20, but he's super slow. But he's, he's super slow, and he's, you will always hit him. Yeah. But, he, yeah, but he hits pretty hard, even given, uh, even for, even compared to some of the war beasts. Yeah, and, other he, war beasts. and like, he, will, he automatically knocks down things as soon as he hits them, and his, his fists are giant lumps of stone, so when he hits things, he knocks them over. Um, yeah, so if you, like, if you want to, if you will go into that side of the faction... Um, with the Construct War Beast, he's definitely the one that does all the killing. Oh, yeah. Um, well, Megalith is a lot better at, at killing now. Though. Yeah, and Megalith, the character, is also very good at... He's also pretty good at killing. Um, and so that's kind of like the, the heavies. And, and generally, you know, generally, like, we have those three classifications. We have the Warp Wolves, which are our elite guys that do... They're, they do... Uh, they kill things really, really well. They just cost a little more to and, do it. And they cost more, yep. Yeah. And then we have the Satyrs, who do... Are very, very cost efficient. They're not like going to overwhelm any every enemy they come across, but they're pretty good at doing their job and they don't cost a lot. And then we have the wolves and they kind of represent the more magical and tougher side of the faction. Um, so yeah, like if you get more into the faction, you usually kind of pick which one of those sets you want to work with the most mm -hmm. and you, you get guys from there. Uh, and then I guess that kind of brings us then to casters because typically your caster des depends decides which set of war beasts you like. Mm -hmm. And a couple good casters to branch off to is the Mark II Battle Box caster is obviously a good caster to learn with. It's uh, Kaya One is really good. She has a lot of little tricks that she can do. She can teleport War Beasts back to her after they've activated and swung on things. So she can save her Warp Wolves from just dying the things the next turn. Yes, she really exemplifies that hit and run nature that Circle kind of still has. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so she's really good at um, exactly like pulling stuff away and keeping it safe. But she's, like, almost strictly the living war beast. And in fact, she has a passive ability that gives living war beasts an extra plus two to hit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, she wants to stick with the living ones pretty much all the time. Uh, and then Kruger 1. Kruger 1 is really good. He's really good at taking either the constructs or the living war beasts because he has offensive spells that the constructs will love to cast. Mm -hmm. But he also likes to have the hard-hitting... Uh, power of some of the living war beasts, so I can see him taking some of the constructs and some of the satyrs mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, 
and he's really good at being versatile. He has buffs for the faction that help against ranged. Uh, he has good, uh, he has a good feat of, like, making, forcing your opponent to avoid an area of the board. Yeah, his feat basically puts down templates on the table that, uh, or do lightning damage to anything that's in it when it goes down, and then they linger for multiple turns. Every turn you remove just one template, so it takes three turns for his feet to effectively end. Um, and anybody who walks into one of those templates while it's still there takes a POW uh, 10 lightning damage roll, which is really bad for most infantry, so he can really kill infantry very well. Um, he also gives out other lightning. Uh, he also gives out a lightning spell to his models and units that makes their attacks lightning-based and uh, they get extra reach with their melee weapons, and mm -hmm. then whenever they attack things, they generate lightning that bounces to other models. He has an off another offensive spells that, that uh, the one that they like to cast a lot is the... Um, the arc lightning. Arc lightning, which will... Uh, you hit something, and lightning will arc D3 times to other things, and do pow tens. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, he's, he's a really... He likes lightning. He likes lightning. That is his thing. And he's a, he's a very versatile caster. He has a gun for himself, and his melee weapon's not bad. So basically, mm -hmm. any situation that you find yourself in, Kruger can pretty much always play his way back out of. He's, he's... That, that's even more so with his second version as well. That is true, yeah. Um, and then the third caster, yeah, this is a caster over here, not a war beast. Yep. His Chromac 2. Uh, he actually, even though he is a war caster, he does in fact actually share the same stat line as our typical war beasts. He has the, the same defense 14, which is low for Warlocks in our faction, but exactly where the War Beasts are. And he has armor 18, which actually makes him slightly higher armor than a lot of the living War Beasts in the faction. And casters. And, yeah, definitely higher than every other Warlock in the faction. Um, and he is a monster. As you can probably guess, he is extremely good in melee himself, so he will kill anything he comes across. But he also is a good support caster. He has strong spells that support mostly a melee-centric army. Mm -hmm. He makes good use of war beasts and infantry. And he's very, like, I think he's a very forgiving caster to play. It's he a very is. straightforward approach where he walks into the middle of the table, he kills everything he can reach, and then he just keeps it going. Yeah, and his feet <laughs> helps, uh, gives another strength buff to your battle group, and, uh, and it gives you an armor buff to your battle group as well. So it makes your battle group more durable for the turn they get stuck in there, so maybe they will have a hard time killing a warp wolf or killing a satyr, and he might have them for the next turn. Yeah, and actually, his feat is really great for just that reason, um, because, like we've talked about before, most of the time you throw in a warp wolf, and then it'll die the next turn. But if you use his feat, you will you can throw in multiple heavies at once, and your opponent no longer can kill all of them. Yeah. They'll have to divide their attention, and if they divide it too much, they won't kill anything. And if they, uh, So most of the time, they'll instead just focus and kill one, and then you'll still have the others there to do work the next turn. Um, and then, did we have any others we want to mention? Uh, that's all the ones I pulled out, unless you had another one you wanted to mention. Um, I would mention the, uh, so there are casters like Balder. Um, yeah. He's, he, I think he deserves kind of a mention, because he specializes, whereas Kaya specializes in the living war beasts, and she has abilities that specifically work for them, Balder specializes in his construct war beasts. Um, he has abilities that allow them to charge for free and perform power attacks without spending fury. Um, and yeah, he's just, he's our big stone friend. And, uh, yeah, like, everything he does is basically centered around around that. Yep. But um, Balder 1, at least, is a, is a very good caster because he can also use Living War Beasts. He can use kind of a nice combination of the two of them pretty well. So I would say he's probably another good one to check out if you're into that side of the faction. So any closing thoughts, then, on Starkle? Um, they're a very fun faction, but you just want to keep in mind that they're a very unforgiving faction. Uh, if you do find yourself out of position, it's very hard to recover in a game. So there's a high learning curve. So if you want to play with Circle, you make sure you, uh, just want to make sure you uh, realize that. Uh, just stick with it. You'll get the hang of it. Uh, it's just going to be a little tougher at first than learning some other factions. Yeah, and when you do get it right, um, you can really surprise your opponent by how much work yeah. you can get done against them with models that they kind of disrespect. Um, because when you look at Circle models in a vacuum, they seem pretty bad. But well, when you put everything together, yeah, they're amazing. They work exceptionally well with each other. I would agree. Yeah. All right, then. Um, and that's pretty much all we've got to say about Circle, so good luck in all of your Circle adventures. And thank you for watching the Circle Faction Focus.